of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, the holy and bright week, the week of the resurrection, the week of celebration and of the feast. Today we are celebrating the life-giving spring of the Theotokos. This is one of the feasts that change, changes according to the resurrection of Christ, to the Pascha. It always fell on the first week, on the first Friday of the bright week. As you see, right after the resurrection of Christ, we are celebrating the first feast of the Mother of God. This is the feast that pretty much the Pentecostalian starts with. And usually, the feasts of the Theotokos are tied in with one of the events of her life. Either is that nativity of the Theotokos, or conception, or annunciation, or dormition, or something else. But in this case, this feast is connected to a miracle showing her love to the creation of God, Sh showing her maternal love to us, the humans. And this goes back about 1,500 years ago in four 50s, four, 470s. And what this, how this had happened, a man was walking outside of the city of Constantinople. And over the sudden, he heard a voice, help, but a very, very weak voice. Many people was passing by. Nobody paid attention. And this reminds us of the parable of the Lord with the Good Samaritan, right? The priest passed by on the other side, the Levite passed by on the other side, and only the Samaritan took care of that poor man. So the same thing here, even though this man was crying for help for a few days. He was blind. His family, his own family, abandoned him because he was a burden for them. So they did not want to have a burden on their shoulders and take care and feed him. So, and they dropped him off outside, far away from the city. And he was, they, pretty much they left him to die there. No one was hearing his voice. Except this one man, a very simple man, a butcher. He heard and he went to find where is this voice coming from. And he found this poor man, barely breathing starving to death. And the first thing he said, thank you, but I'm thirsty and starving. Please give me a drop of water. He didn't have anything on him. And he went into the forest. Maybe he will find a spring of water or something to give him something to drink, somehow to quench his thirst. He went deeper in the forest, but he didn't find anything. So he was willing to give up. But he heard the voice, go deeper, don't give up. 
So he went deeper in the forest, but again, he didn't find anything. He wanted to come back, and he heard again, again the voice, go deeper. Trust me. He went deeper. Again, nothing. And he's hearing again the voice, a little bit more. Don't be afraid. And when he walked a little bit more, he found this beautiful spring with fresh and cold water. He took water and went and gave to this blind man. And he thanked him. But now the voice is telling him to wash his eyes. Wash his eyes. And you see who am I that I'm dwelling in this place. He was hesitant for a while, but he thought to himself, I have nothing to lose. And he's washing the eyes of the blind man. And right away, his eyes was open. And he said, I can see. Thank you. So, this man, as I said, he was a butcher. His name was Leo. Couple, couple years later, he became the Emperor of Constantinople, Leo I. You see the grace of God. And immediately when he became the emperor of the biggest emperor, uh, empire, the Byzantine Empire, he remembered and he went to that place and built a big church dedicated to the Theotokos. So it was destroyed several times. Justinian rebuilt it again. And that church that was rebuilt by Justinian is in Turkey till today. And even today, not only Christians are going to that spring, life-giving spring, but also the Muslims, the Turks. They are going and they are getting healed from every disease, every single disease. They are going there, they, even though they are saying officially they are most Muslims, but they are hidden Christians, and they believe in them. And they, they are going like the multitude every year on the feast, the multitude of Christians, and both Christians and Muslims, going to that spring is under the church and heals thousands and thousands of people that is going there. So you see the love of the mother of God for God's creation. It's huge. It's unlimited. And this is what we are remembering today on the life-giving spring, the miracle that she had made. And you see this simple man with the grace of God because he had faith, he had love, he had compassion. He was merciful. And God had chosen him from a butcher to become uh, the emperor of the most powerful em empire in the world. But you see, as that the, the gospel with the found with the fountain that only once a year, one, once a time, the angel would come and tremble the water, and whoever will enter first will be cured by every disease. So we have this blessing in every single place that there is an Orthodox priest blessing the waters. We can be cured every single time, not only once when the angel comes, and not only one in one place, but everywhere. And as we today before the worthless, we actually blessed the water, and whoever will are willing to get the blessed water from today from this feast of the Theotokos will be able to get the water 
the, the holy water with you. So you see the grace and love of God, the grace and love of the mother of God, always thinking and taking care of, of us. Even though we are so ungrateful and we are so demanding and all these weird things that we are going through right now in our times, still God is waiting for us as for, for the prodigal son. Just make few steps towards God and he will run towards us to embrace us, to take us in his arms, to put us in his heart. But one thing is requested from us, to be pious, to be loving, to be humble, to respect each other. This, that's, that's all. He doesn't ask more than that. It's so simple. To bring God in our lives, to bring, to bring God in our hearts, to make our heart the throne of God, of the Most High God. See, we can, we can actually bring the heavens to dwell in our hearts, but it depends on us. Are we open to that? Can we do that? Can we humble ourselves? That's the, that's the whole point. That's the whole thing. Let us think. Let us reflect on this. Let us beg the Theotokos to soften our hearts. Let us beg her to lead us, to guide us. Let us beg her son to give us the light of understanding, to understand his words, the gospel, to understand his commandments. Let us beg him and ask him to give us the love of his saints. Because without the love of his saints, we cannot do this. Because look at, looking at them, they denied and rejected everything earthly and they embraced everything that is related with the divine, with heavenly, with spiritual. So this is what we have to do, my dear ones, in order to inherit life eternal. So let us strive for this along with the mother of God and all the saints to glorify the resurrected God. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen.